Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here for my favorite time of the year. It's the Heroes of Olympus read along. So as I introduce these vlogs every month, each month me and my friend Honani have been hosting the Percy Jackson, which turned into the Heroes of Olympus read along. So every month we read a book from our King Ricky boy, Rick Riordan. This month it's The Mark of Athena and I cannot stress enough how excited I am for this book. Firstly, because a lot of people, when they talk about the Heroes of Olympus series, they mention quite frequently that The Mark of Athena is their favorite book in the series. So that's one of the reasons I'm really interested in this. But the second reason I'm interested in this, and if you've watched my two previous vlogs, you'll understand the plot of the Heroes of Olympus series. The first book opens with a boy named Jason who ends up finding himself at the Greek camp, even though he seems to only be able to speak Italian or Roman or Latin, I guess. And he is quite different from the other demigods. The second book opens with a similar situation, but with Percy Jackson in the Roman camp. And now in this book, I think they're expected to come together. I know this book primarily follows Annabeth, who is the daughter of Athena. So we should be expecting a lot of her perspective which I'm very excited for. We have never had Annabeth's perspective in any of the books we've read from before. So that's really intriguing. I'm really interested to see how the book shapes out with her perspective. So we just got into our first sprints. Honani is 200 pages ahead of me and she says that now there are different perspectives in the book as well. We're not solely following Annabeth, which I think is a good thing. I think I would be a little bored of just Annabeth's perspective if that was the case. So I'm very excited and also intrigued by this spider lady. I don't know what's going on here, but we'll see what happens. So yeah, this is the beginning of the Mark of Athena vlog. I am like, who the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Pedro, you at now? It's true. You started early. I'm on page 200. What? <laughs> who are you? You know what I did yesterday? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. It would be the Kane Chronicles next. Okay. Which I have heard literally exactly zero people speak about oh, oh okay. i've never heard a single person talk about the king chronicles the trilogy yeah oh period <laughs> yeah we'll fly through that <laughs> and also the percy jackson book would we read both in one month or would we oh. take a month off to read the new percy jackson book oh yeah is that what we're you doing I feel yeah. like <laughs> we yeah. are representatives yeah that's true Ricky he, he's, he's waiting for our critique so, yeah. and our vlogs so I yeah feel like Oh my gosh, we've been talking for 20 minutes. Look at us. <laughs> Chatty girlies. I feel like it's like, because we don't talk for a month, so we're like... <laughs> <laughs> Jason and Piper were two books ago, right? So I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, yeah. What? I can't remember. Like, what yeah. The Another thing I appreciate about Ricky Boy, and because I think it's a middle grade, is that he repeats a lot. Because there's so much. And like at the end of this book, there's a glossary too. Did you see that? Yeah. I said blessings, blessings on your <laughs> blessings. soul. Okay, it was in young adult when I yeah. bought it. But I, but I don't think it's a young adult book. Uh... Are you okay? <laughs> so we're currently in our last sprint. It was a shorter sprint today. Um, right now I'm on page 100, and so far we've had this perspectives of Annabeth and Leo. And what I really like is these like contrasting of perspectives. We were talking about this in the sprints that Annabeth, coming from her perspective, she's a lot more likable in a sense um especially because we're seeing her inner dialogue and we're understanding the way annabeth thinks and she's obviously incredibly intelligent as a daughter of athena and so seeing her not necessarily be calculated but intelligent in the way that she presents information and how she tackles certain situations i think makes annabelle uh, <laughs> makes annabeth a much more likable character and then when you contrast that to seeing leo who leo is a new character that we're seeing. Leo is also much more, not younger, he is younger, but younger in a sense of the way he thinks. And what we saw happening is that something's going on with Leo. In one scene, he was overcome by a 
a certain feeling um, and he attacked the Roman camps. And I think that that's interesting because we are often seeing in this series specifically a contrast between the Greeks and the Romans and Leo didn't want to attack the camp but he ends up doing that and that causes that friction between the two camps. What I like is that Frank and Hazel join the team regardless because they are part of the prophecy of the seven and so they're not mad at Leo and they're kind of understanding of him and I enjoy the friendship that's building between him and Hazel. Basically Leo is much more he's more charming in a sense the chapter that i just finished on leo and hazel are they're getting like a bronze mirror from narcissus and i really liked seeing narcissus 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 um in this because something that i always 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 liked about percy jackson and the heroes of olympus is the like mythology background that it's coming from and i still really enjoy that we're still seeing figures from these mythologies and how they're intercepting and interacting with the demigods and so i like that this chapter paired hazel roman camp and leo of the greek camp who are both really new to these camps but are working together and i like the the, the friendship that's developing between them um and i think that there's something going on with hazel's background and Leo's background. There's something obviously interacting between them. Rick Riordan makes that very clear. Leo looks like someone from Hazel's past. So I'm very interested to see like how that will pair up, how that will affect their friendship and what's going on between them. And now we're just about to move into Piper's chapter. And something I said in the uh, reading sprints as well is that Piper and Jason were not two characters that really intrigued me from the first book. And we haven't seen them since the first book. So I'm interested to see if Piper's storyline becomes more interesting but as a character herself I wasn't totally intrigued by her so I'm very interested to see if that will change in this book um we still have quite a bit to go I'm not even like a quarter of the way done so we'll see what happens as it develops um we have about 30 minutes left in the sprint so I'm gonna try to read as much as possible and then probably take a break to make dinner pasta whatever um and then we'll continue from there More like Percy. Hmm. I feel like I am. I have Leo brain, mm. but like I'm not interesting. <laughs> I don't want to say Annabeth, but I also feel like, like if we were on a mission, I would be like, "Okay, yeah, everybody, listen to me, because I'm the smartest." Oh, <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, look at the time!" I'm like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love ya. Thank you. Bye guys. We'll have to end the broadcast too. Hello, so before I continue um, moving forward with my reading, I did want to update because I reached the 200 page mark and so far we're having really interesting revelations. So basically the whole point of this novel is that the Prophecy of the Seven have to work together to go to Rome to stop whatever Gaia is planning. And at this point, Gaia's two sons, they are like two twin giants, I forget their names, Aphelialtes and Otis, they have captured Nico. And so Nico is now trapped in a jar and he's kind of 
being used as a trap to lure Percy, Annabeth, Hazel, Frank, and Leo. And that's where we are in regards to the plot right now. So they have just confirmed basically that Nico is in that jar and Percy and Frank have made their way to the aquarium of Atlanta in order to see four seas who is one of the he's the god of the deep sea and he has some knowledge on the twin giants and what they're doing and what Gaia's plans are so right now he Percy and Frank are being lured further into the aquarium Percy thinks it's a trap um so we'll see where that goes this is also the first or a couple of chapters from Percy that we're getting. Before that chapter, we also got uh, the perspective of Piper. And I wouldn't say it's the most engaging of the plot. However, Piper does have the, um, what's it called? The dagger of Helen of Troy. So she's able to see like what's going on and she's the first one to see Nico in the jar. So that's like where Piper's role kind of is right now. And obviously bonding with Jason, we'll just see how that goes. But right now we don't really understand much about the two prophecies we've seen in the Son of Neptune. So I'm hoping that um, a lot will be revealed. I looked up reviews earlier today and the first one I saw was just like, why, why, why? in like capital letters. I don't know if I want to know like what, what that entails. Um, but we'll see. I will be continuing this, but tonight I think I just want to get maybe to page like 250, like maybe another 50 pages because I do want to focus on Words of Radiance as well because I am reading 200 pages every week. So I would like to knock out those pages pretty early on in the week so I could focus on other things on my TBR. Hello, good morning. It is the next day. Um, I'm currently taking a break from work and I did get another 50 pages read of... I forgot the name of the book, Mark of Athena. Which you know, because you're watching this vlog. I don't know why I have to keep saying that. But between the 50 pages I read last night before going to bed and the 50 pages I read right now, a lot of stuff has happening. So the three major points that I want to bring up. First of all, that the children of Athena are afraid of spiders. So if you know, I was very curious about this spider lady um, on the front cover. And I think that this is Arachne. And I have a feeling that Annabeth is going to meet her because they've brought up that they are scared of spiders. She's having dreams of interacting with spiders spiders so i just feel like this is going to be a story and this is going to be like not the turning point of the novel but definitely like the big climax where annabeth will have to like face this demon you know to like find the mark of athena and save nico for sure so the second thing is that we find out that leo is the great grandson of sammy baldez who is who was hazel's friend in the past and they see this through two flashbacks together one where hazel is showing her like friendship with sammy and how he's always defended her and then I guess it's Leo's memory that kind of interrupts where the memory shows Leo as a baby being introduced to his great grandfather and his great grandfather saying to protect Hazel and you see Leo's mom kind of being like okay like Sammy's just old and like he doesn't know what he's saying he's blabbering on but Sammy's like making it adamant to Leo that he has to protect Hazel that Gaia is going to intervene at some point and Leo is the one that will protect Hazel. The third thing is that we made the connection between why Frank is very jealous of Hazel. Part of this is just because I think there will be a love triangle um, happening with the three of them. I'm not a thousand percent sure. Um, Leo has mentioned that he he's like kind of weirded out that like she had a friendship or whatever love with um, his great grandfather. So he's kind of like, I don't know anymore. But um, also I forgot that Hazel has Frank's um, like firewood, um, his lifeline basically on her at all times. And because Leo can control fire, um, Frank is like kind of worried maybe in a sense that he will ruin um, Frank's firewood and therefore Frank's life, um, he will die, you know? <laughs> they are now getting a bunch of clues like by going around the like Atlantic Ocean in a sense, so Charleston, Atlanta and now they're going somewhere else that I can't remember um but they need to make their way to Rome obviously to save Nico I'm now at the 300 page mark um I do want to finish this book today so I'll try to read whenever I can and update you at the next 100 mark hello so girl what is going on with your hair I cannot for the life of me remember if I vlogged yesterday at all um, I think I did, but I did end up getting to page 450 last night. So I read a total of 200 pages yesterday and obviously a lot happened. Um, but I do want to talk about how I'm feeling overall about the structure of the novel, because I definitely think that this is one of 
the Mark of Athena's downfall. So because it follows Percy, Annabeth, Leo, and Piper, Hazel and Jason are kind of left in the background and that really stifles I find the novel overall particularly because Hazel and Jason become kind of like background characters they're a little annoying if I have to say so myself so basically um because Hazel's main motivation is to get to Nico and to save Nico when she does appear in the novel even though she, we're discovering more about her backstory and learning about Sammy and how it relates to Leo Hazel is kind of left uh, with two motivations it seems. One, this love triangle between Leo and Frank and she's kind of like, Daddy, stop, stop fighting over me. Or she's like, hey, my brother is about to die. Like, let's go save him. And that's all she's reduced to. So every time Hazel is featured, it's around one or two of those things. And she doesn't come off as a very strong character anymore. And she was one of the characters that I really liked in The Son of Neptune. Similarly, I find Jason's character is kind of reduced to one being angry and weirdly competitive with Percy. And like, I guess I understand because they're both like used to being leaders. And so this like conflict of them two comes from like Percy's idea of Jason. And also like they were taken over by ghosts and they had to have this like duel and they like didn't succeed in it um, because Piper stopped the duel from happening. But now they're like, weirdly tense with each other because they didn't get to fight or whatever like i think that's weird like I, I don't know jason's just like they're vibing and like trying to be like a hero as well as percy that's part of like percy's perspective and then he's also reduced to piper's like idea of him as a boyfriend and this idea that piper is kind of competing with like reyna how like her and jason's relationship is developing which i also don't care about so i feel like jason and hazel who had like relatively strong and meaningful perspectives in a way are reduced to like nothing characters that really bore me. And I think that that's partly because of the structure of the novel, because it's now following seven gods, but only four perspectives, we're really reducing those two characters. I want to check if in House of Hades we have Jason and Hazel's perspective. I would assume so because of Hades. So I feel like Hazel's perspective. Yeah, Hazel has a perspective. Frank has a perspective. Jason has a perspective of, as well. So that makes that makes sense. Just because I feel like they're so reduced in this novel, they would have to kind of be developed here. I also feel like that makes the novel feel choppy because we're following characters and then something's happening with the other characters, but we're not seeing that. We're only being told that. So things will happen and they'll meet back on the Argo, back on the ship, and they'll be like, oh, we did this. Oh, well, we did this. And we know what, like, for example, Leo did because we're following him, but then we won't follow like what happened with the other characters and we're just kind of like told what happened to them, which I think is like really stilting the novel. I currently just read Annabeth's part where she is caught by Arachne. So that is who this is. <laughs> and Arachne is a like Greek mythological figure who was sentenced to being a spider forever because of Athena and they were kind of like competing to see who was like the best weaver and Athena was like not happy with her and turned her into a spider. So obviously she does not like Athena and she does not like the children of Athena, which Annabeth is. I really enjoyed those couple of chapters because it's really showing Annabeth's perspective. It's also really showing how smart Annabeth is. And although I wouldn't say the challenges are like that difficult, obviously this is a middle grade novel, so they're not like the hardest puzzles to solve but I appreciate that it's really showcasing Annabeth's ability to critical think how it's showing Annabeth's ability to think in the moment and solve issues right away it's really demonstrating her strength and also it's demonstrating her architecture skills her weaving skills other aspects of Athena that we don't really see in the novel because we never saw Annabeth's perspective so now we're moving into Leo's perspectives and right now they are trying to find the underground city of Rome in order to find where Nico is so Leo is with Frank and Hazel Hazel has just gone under the city again this is what I'm talking about Hazel is going under the city to kind of explore and see like if there's pathways that they can um, find but right now we see that Leo and Frank are currently being attacked by those three ghosts that have taken over their bodies in the beginning of the novel, uh, come back to kind of attack them and they're taking over the form of these American kids. Oh, something else I wanted to mention is that Frank also doesn't have a perspective and therefore Frank is kind of reduced to, again, Hazel, Leo, Frank, like trifecta of problems. But then also I find like Leo's really making fun of Frank a lot and I don't find that nice um, and I don't understand why that's happening. I guess it's like supposed to be like a jealousy perspective and that's why I feel like the novel is stilted because we're not really understanding this 
love triangle we're kind of only seeing it from leo's perspective if leo is jealous i would like to know that he is and that's why he's making fun of frank you know what i mean and so i don't feel like frank deserves to be bullied by leo <laughs> i don't know i'm very confused on my feelings of this book because a lot of people praise this to be like the best heroes of olympus book and it's just not giving it to me it's definitely still a four star but i'm noticing a lot of problems with it um so i have about a hundred or so pages left so i'm definitely going to finish this today and i'm going to come back with my full thoughts okay so if you hear my washing machine in the background no you do not but i have read so many reviews where people are talking about the ending of this book and why percy and annabeth why 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 and i thought they just broke up but i am currently on page 564 and you know when like you can just send something coming like hazel's like her ankle cut it cut it so Annabeth, something's wrong with her ankle. And we know that she put it in a makeshift cast, but I think something crazy is gonna happen. So I wanna record my reaction reading this. I'm on page 564. If you've read the book, maybe you know what's gonna happen. Um, we have exactly eight pages until the end of the book. So I feel like it's gonna be crazy and I would like to know why. I mean, it was told to us the whole time that a sacrifice of a boy demigod and a girl demigod was going to be made to the darkness. I should have expected this. Oh my God. So as you saw in the last clip, I finished The Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan. Oh, how to rate this book. As a whole, in general, I think the plot of this book was really solid. It was engaging. It really allowed us to expand on new characters, particularly Annabeth. She is a perspective that we have not seen for seven books. I also feel like this novel really opened up in the lore of the universe. We learned a lot about Greek gods in the Percy Jackson series. And as we know, this series is bringing together Roman mythology with Greek mythology. And we haven't learned so much about their Roman counterparts, the Roman gods and the Roman lore. So I found that this novel really demonstrated the Roman aspect of history. It described the fall of the Greek Empire and the rise of the Roman one and how the two mythologies are similar in a way but differ in multitudes of ways. This is mainly due to the fact that Rick Riordan has included seven main characters in the series and while this can be really exciting to a lot of people it's kind of like the Avengers of the Rick Riordan universe I found it to be the novel's main downfall. Because individual chapters are written from one character's perspective, when those characters are off on a different mission and another group of characters is off on another mission, there are moments where we're simply told what happened to the other group instead of being shown because we're in this group's specific perspective. Sometimes this also caused characters to remain on the ship, like Annabeth, for such stupid reasons and this caused those chapters to feel like weak and choppy for me. Additionally, I've mentioned this several times in the vlog, but this caused some characters to feel really lackluster, particularly Jason and Hazel. I find Frank's character, while not having a perspective, was still kind of developed, but Hazel and Jason were reduced to very surface level characters with very surface level wants and needs. However, of course, this book is not intended for adults. It is intended for a middle grade audience. And the plot was so interesting. The ending obviously was super fucking shocking. So I decided to ignore the structural issues that would usually impact my rating for adult books and give it a four stars. Genuinely, like I said, I really did enjoy the plot. I had some issues with the structure. So I just decided to settle on that four star rating overall enjoyed this and overall i hope you enjoyed this vlog so as it is the end of the vlog if you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias i do leave a link down below to my twitter goodreads and instagram if you would like to follow me there and of course as i always say please do not forget to like subscribe and ring the notification bell 
it does wonders for my channel and makes me feel really good. And that's it. I never know how to end these things. Hope you're enjoying the Heroes read-along. Um, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye!